we know who he is. Okay, so he is the founder and CEO of Bantu Blockchain Foundation. I've mentioned that in this capacity, um, he provides overall program oversight on the Sterling Bantu engagement as the program director. Um, he is a serial impact entrepreneur, inventor, and investor with over 20 years of experience in designing and implementing enterprise solutions for diverse industries and international organizations. He has founded numerous companies in the United Kingdom, Canada, Turkey, Cyprus, Cameroon, and Seychelles. Um, in the past, he also served as an internet technology expert for the British Commonwealth Service Abroad Program and the Canadian International Development Agency for projects uh, aimed at empowering entrepreneurs in developing nations. He's a blockchain pioneer, engineer, and designer since 2009. He has focused on designing practical and innovative approaches that benefit society on a whole with an emphasis on large-scale, systematic, and sustainable social change. Ladies and gentlemen, please, with a round of applause, as well as our online community, join me to make welcome to the microphone, Mr. Ernest Mbenkum, who is the founder and CEO of Bantu Blockchain Foundation, as well as Insta Stella. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Wow. That was a long intro. I was wondering if it was myself or somebody else. Anyway, um, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us in this new and amazing journey we are about to undertake. You know, this is something that has been long time coming. And uh, blockchain wasn't really something I had expected to address some of the uh, challenges that we were looking to solve. And so today is the birth of something amazing. You know, we might ask, like, why Bantu? And I'd like to start by saying, you know, once in a while, mankind unlocks a secret so profound that our lives are forever altered. You have fire, electricity, splitting the atom, jollof rice, we can debate Cameroon rice or Nigeria or Ghana, but that's a whole different topic. So almost 12 years ago today, a person or collective known as Satoshi Nakamoto launched the first blockchain application called Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network. And the world has never been the same since then. The Bantu Blockchain Foundation team members have been part of this journey since the very early days. And we Watch blockchain evolve, mutate, transform to address different challenges. We've also contributed to some of the major blockchains out there, either as members or in code and things like that. Now, while blockchain technology is still in its relative infancy, it is now evolving at a more rapid pace as people learn more about it and gain more awareness, just as the internet did in the 90s, which saw the birth of companies like Yahoo, Google, Amazon, etc. are doing today with Bantu is part of that journey, a journey that starts today in Africa and will spread out globally. Now, before I start, I wanted to talk a bit about the uh, logo. Um, just wait for Sir Victor. Because it's very important. Uh, some of you might have noticed our logo and you might be wondering what's going on there, but would like to share. So the first thing is, it is inspired by an ancient Adrinka symbol from Ghana, Fawohodi, which is basically a symbol that means independence, empowerment, emancipation. So that's the first part. It kind of looks like the Wakanda symbol, you know. So next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So then we have the word Bantu. Bantu is a term that means humans, people, humanity. And as you can see, 
it's basically coined from the plural noun class prefix ba, uh, basically categorizing people and their root ntu. And bantu, basically, when you look at it going from West Africa, Central Africa towards the South, you get to South Africa where you have the word Ubuntu. Again, all of that just revolving around humanity. And it's often translated, you know, as we heard before, I am because we are humanity towards others, so to speak. Next slide, please. Okay. So ultimately, when you combine the logo and you combine the word Bantu, we're talking about empowering humanity and empowering people. And there's a responsibility to that. Now, when we leave that, we look at some of the use cases for this technology and what it can do. A lot of people have come into this space through an angle of speculation, trading. You know, we have the moon boys, Lamborghinis, trying to get rich. Nothing wrong with that. However, after all the fun and excitement, we need to look at real world challenges and how we can address them. And this is really where we are trying to focus with the Bantu, especially with the challenges in the emerging markets. So one of the first things is that we can use blockchain technology to unlock liquidity from real world assets, natural resources, real estate, community services, et cetera. How do you do that? By tokenizing, by digitizing. Often we are told that emerging markets or countries in Africa are poor, but everybody keeps coming to extract mineral wealth and other resources. If we can find a way to tokenize this, map all these resources, put them on the blockchain, then we can now make them more liquid and move them faster. Some of them can be securitized, like commodities. And as, as our elder brother said, Sir Abu Bakr Suleiman, that value becomes harmonized globally. So no other person or location is devalued for whatsoever reason. The next part of this is nano finance. We've heard of banking finance, microfinance, but what about nano finance? So blockchain allows us to send and receive transactions at extremely low cost. So when we've digitized all these assets, tokenized them, how do we move them? How do we make it affordable for everybody? So blockchain allows us to really do that at a really subatomic level. You could send tens of thousands of transactions for less than a dollar. Then you look at things like, you know, secure medical and other sensitive data, which can be held and protected in blockchain because it's tamper proof, it's immutable and can be accessed only by those with the right keys, etc. You come into the entertainment sector, actors, musicians, intellectual property. How can they protect their IP? Well, blockchain lets you do that. You create an item, compose music, you sign it on the blockchain. So there's a timestamp that you are the originator and you can then basically generate revenue and get reward for that. The other item is cross-border payments and currency swaps in real time. So it's very difficult as anyone can know when you're trying to do remittances to send money back home to friends or across the world, or even within countries next to each other, like between Cameroon, Nigeria, Togo, etc. So blockchain helps to dissolve those barriers by instantly making it available in various forms and applications. Then we look at personal identification. So many people today are financially excluded because they have no way of proving their identity. And without an identity, you cannot be tracked. You cannot be part of this whole financial ecosystem. And we feel that blockchain can create identities that can be held globally, accessible globally. So people can then gain access to not just the financial services, but also government and other services. Then you go to things like anti-money laundering, anti-fraud mechanisms, fraud, uh, basically vouchers and things like that that can be protected by blockchain. And finally, because the list goes on and on, supply chain management, logistics tracking, so fast moving consumer goods, all of these things can be tracked in real time, especially now that trust is such a big thing. 
when we are all being forced to social distance, to be isolated, to be restricted. And so if you're going to have things moving from place to place or from person to person, you need an, a platform or an infrastructure that can permit you to be able to move around, track, and do things in a very trustless manner. So I'll just dive in a little bit into sort of a macroeconomic view, looking at some key numbers. Billions of people today remain unbanked or underbanked, and these are mostly localized in emerging markets. 85% of the GDP in the next 10 years is going to happen in these emerging markets where access to things like stock markets, credit is limited or nearly impossible, much less banking and financial services. These next three to four billion people have smartphones, but they don't have credit cards or access to banks and financial services. How do you build financial products that are cost effective for the billion or multi-billion people? How do you decrease costs by an order of magnitude? How do you create a stock market or publicly traded venture funds where it is extremely cost effective to have people invest like $10 into a portfolio of 100 companies or startups within their local economies and become less dependent on foreign aid or debt? This is only possible by automating compliance, fraud detection, AYC, and regulatory frameworks using software and smart contracts, and by removing layers of overhead in back office, legal, and settlement. Now, when you look at Africa in especially, which is where we are right now, we've all heard of the Continental Free Trade Area, which was ratified last year in May 2019. And according to the World Bank, the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will create the largest free trade area on Earth, measured by the number of companies, countries. The pact connects 1.3 billion people 55 countries with a combined gross domestic product valued at 3.4 trillion. This has the potential to lift millions of people out of extreme poverty. Now, we believe that Bantu, the blockchain, can contribute to this free trade by providing resources, tools, the base utility token called the Bantu Network Token or XBN. The smallest unit of that token is called the Spirit. Every blockchain has a tiny unit. So Bitcoin is Satoshi, uh, Ethereum is Gwei, Stellar is the Stroop. So for Bantu, we call it the spirit. Now you may ask, can we trust this new thing called blockchain? We've had many scams, many challenges, many setbacks. The technology, like most things, is a double-edged sword. And I like to tell people that bad actors or criminals also use electricity, mobile phones, banks, cars. They also eat and drink. But for the most part, technology is used for good. When the computer first came out, people asked, what could it be used for? But it was Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, that made computers personal. When the internet came out, people said, it would be, what could it be used for? It was, it was a dangerous place, a scary place. Berners-Lee gave us the World Wide Web and browsers were invented, search engines were added, information became democratized, Amazon, Alibaba and all the rest were social media exploded. The same questions have been asked about blockchain, which is now more than a decade year old. Today we use computers, mobile devices and the internet without even thinking. It's all normalized now. It's become ubiquitous. Now, Bantu and the foundation, it's this next frontier. And we are inviting everybody to come on board, developers, engineers, companies, to build the next decentralized Amazon, Facebook, digital, etc. And this infrastructure is not here to compete with existing banks, governments, or other institutions. It is here to complement them. And we hope that leverage this infrastructure as they've leveraged the internet using telecoms, using electricity. And this Bantu blockchain is going to be open source where developers and others can come to help us scale. The team has worked on this tirelessly over the last 18 months and especially the last 10 months. 
many stepped forward, sacrificed their time. As you can imagine, we invited these young men and women, and we said, we have almost an impossible task. And you have to work for free without getting paid. So I would like to thank all of them, because if I start naming, it might take a while, for all their selfless sacrifice, those who have contributed to this journey. I would also like to thank those who've supported us, their families, who've tolerated their late nights every single day. I would also like to thank our advisors, who've been very close and supportive. And you say that you will not be forgotten. And I always like to end my presentations or speeches with three things. Always to say, there are three types of people. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who wonder what the hell happened. So I'd like to thank all of you for being part of those who make things happen. Thank you.